Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I wanna share with you three strategies and tips that I use to help organize and clean up my Unity inspector panel window. So what does a messy inspector panel even look like and why is it a problem? So I've created this little sample scene here to help illustrate the situation. So clicking on our player game object, the inspector panel over here is revealed. And the inspector panel, as you might know, is the place that has all the different attributes and components that are attached to any one particular game object. You know, things like the positional information, box colliders, uh, sprite renderers, rigid bodies, and a myriad of different scripts, you know, player movement. And, and on a primary inspector panel like the game object, which we will be visiting many times over the course of a project, we want to be able to find the information very quickly because Every time we have to take a moment to think about where something is, it's gonna zap a little bit of that precious mental energy. So keep that in mind. All right, so the first step we'll wanna to take to improving this is by minimizing a lot of these non-primary components. And what I mean by non-primary is that components that we aren't actively working with and don't need to be looking at the information. Things like the box collider. I mean, I don't need to be looking at the box collider right now. Things like an audio source that does not need to be open. And same goes for the animator. How often do you need to look at this um, animator information here? Like you just don't. Once you create it, you just kind of leave it and you can close it. So keep that in mind because whatever is in your visual field, whether you like it or not, your, your eyes are gonna be picking it up and sending that information to your brain for processing. And um, that can often over a course of a, a period of time or a full dev session or even a full project, that can really add up. So the second thing you'll notice here is that the order in which these components have been added is rather arbitrary. We've got um, scripts jumbled up with audio um, sources and animators, and it's just not particularly um, visually um, pleasing to look at. So what you want to do here, you can see these little dots here. Here you can actually move components up or down. You see? So what I typically like to do, I like to put the more important components at the top. So you can either do it like this. It's a little bit clumsy guys. It's not ideal. It's rather slow. The other thing you can do is click and you can physically drag it to the place you want it to be. But you can see it's a bit fiddly because every time you open you drag over another component it'll open up so it takes a bit of time but these are the two approaches that you can use to move these components around so I'll quickly just organize these in a bit of a better way all right so you can see here I've grouped all my script files together at the top just underneath the transform the transform is uh, has to be at the top that's a mandatory thing you can see you can't actually uh, move anything above it and you can't move this transform down, which is fine. You kind of want that to be at the top anyway. And after that, I've added all the kind of uh, Unity specific um, things at the bottom that I may not be looking at too often. All right, cool. So this is a rather crucial part of this approach. You can see here on my player movement script, I have a long list of exposed fields, essentially variables from the underlying script file that can be modified through the inspector panel. Now there's nothing wrong with that because that's what the inspector panel is largely designed for to allow us to modify the um, underlying variables. That's part of what makes Unity so powerful. But there's just a lot here. Not necessarily everything should be in this list. You should only be exposing variables that you explicitly want to be modified through the inspector panel. And furthermore, it's just really unorganized. So we want to kind of get into this file now and have a look what's going on. Aha! You may have guessed it. Public, 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 public. A lot of beginners fall into this trap where everything becomes public because why not, right? But the thing is, the moment you make something public, it then becomes exposed in the um, Unity Inspector panel. This, in my opinion, is a bit of a flaw to me, and it's kind of um, creating some bad programming practices, whether Unity is aware of this or not. But I, I think it's a bit of a problem. All right, so what is the correct approach here if we don't want to be making everything public? Well, if we remove this public accessor type, that will automatically be enough to mark it as private. 
The other way we can do it, we can explicitly write private here and that will also make it private. So this is probably more of a um, better, con better convention to use because then it visually makes it very clear what you're, what you're intending this data type to be. All right, so let's jump back into Unity quickly and watch this. Boom, all those variables are now hidden. None of those are exposed. Now we want to pick which one specifically we want to bring back, but still using good coding practices. Before we do that, actually, look at this list. So we really need to organize this a little bit better. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can physically cut and paste a line like this, or we can select a particular line, hold down the Alt key on our keyboard, and then press the up or down arrow and we can manage the position like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly run through and organize these into more um, coherent groups. All right, so you can see here, I've organized the different variables into groups. So at the top here, I've got the different kind of other script files, I've got the Unity kind of um, components here. Then I've got like walk specific stuff and jump specific stuff. And then there's kind of booleans here. And um, why organize it like this? Well, first of all, just from a logical perspective, looking at the code, it's much easier to understand what we're looking at. But furthermore, when we do expose these in the inspector, when we choose which ones we want to expose, the order in which we write it here is the order in which it will appear in the inspector. So let's now choose which of these we want to expose. And we'll do that by using the serialized field. So the serialized field label will make the um, values available in the inspector. And you can kind of write it above or you can write it to the side, up to you. I've seen people do it um, differently. So now we just want to expose the things we want to expose. So if any one of these we don't want changed, then we don't have to include it. So I'll maybe take that one out just to show some variation. So jump force, jump hang time. Maybe let's keep the uh, jump delay hidden. And I'll put these booleans as serialized. I actually made a specific video addressing the topic of public versus serialized fields. So if you wanna learn more about this topic, I do encourage you to check out that video. I'll put a link down below. Cool, so now we have a much more organized list. We've got the walk, we've got the jump, and now we've got these kind of booleans grouped together. All right, so what if actually we needed one of these to be public? Because the thing is, there's nothing wrong with public. It's used for creating a specific code architecture so that classes can have access to other classes in the right way. You just don't want everything to be public because it kind of, um, violates the encapsulation kind of conventions that we've strive for as good uh, software architects. Right, so let's say this is move allowed boolean here. For whatever reason, needs to be public. What do we do? Because now it's gonna, because we marked the access type as public, it's gonna expose it in uh, Unity. You see, is move allowed is now exposed. But say we wanna continue to leave it hidden but we want it to be public. There's two ways we can do this. This is pretty cool. So the first way is to do hide in inspector. So this is a Unity specific convention. So when you import um, the Unity engine over here, with it, it imports this functionality. So this will do exactly what you think it might do. Boom, that move um, is move allowed is now gone. So the other way to do this, non serialized and you can see it's not importing and this is because it's part of a c-sharp systems library so we can do it by writing uh, system dot non serialized like this or we can simply uh, make sure that we have the root system library imported and if we do that then we don't need the system, it stays green. Okay, so let's jump back to Unity and have a look. Yep, the is move is still hidden. 
So that's quite powerful. So our inspector panel is looking pretty good at this point, but let's optimize it even further for efficiency. So what we can do, you know how I organize these groups here? We can visually organize these groups in the Unity Inspector. All we need to do is open another attribute tag, but instead of writing serialized or hide in Inspector, we're gonna write header. And then we're gonna follow that by opening and closing a bracket and putting a string inside. And here we're gonna write whatever the heading we want it to be. So I'll just say walk settings. And we'll use that convention again down here. Jump settings. And here you can say whatever, misc for miscellaneous. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to write that specifically, but just as an example of, of how this might be done. Boom, look, this looks awesome. So you can see here, everything is organized nice and clean. So every time I come to this panel, I can just pop it open and you can see how immediately that's so much easier to work with. And comparing it to the earlier panel we had, it's just night and day. It, was, it was, would have been very difficult to constantly be jumping between um, that earlier panel version. So I'm gonna give you guys one more bonus tip because I'm in a good mood today and you guys are all right. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So for the last tip, I'm gonna jump back to our code window and we're gonna write one more attribute tag at the risk of over attributing our code. So we're gonna to write tooltip and you might know where we are going with this. And we're gonna pass in a string here. We're gonna write the speed of the player box. Now, when we hover over that walk speed, look, it gives us a little pop up there. So if you're working independently or solo, this is probably less relevant, though it can be still useful for keeping track of what things do in your code. But if you're in a team environment, then I'm sure that people will be very grateful um, that you've done that because it'll let other collaborators quickly understand what each of the things in your code means. And most of the stuff is kind of obvious, like walk speed or run speed, but some stuff is not. Like this, for example, this turn delay. I mean, what exactly does that mean? And a lot of developers have a habit of writing very cryptic uh, variable names, you know, V underscore two, three, five, something else. So, <laughs> well, don't be that guy, first of all, but if you have some uh, variable that is kind of like not clear exactly what it might be, then you can write uh, time between the player changing facing directions. All right, so that makes sense. And what this tooltip is actually good at too, it saves us having to then write additional comments. Sometimes you might write um, the comment next to the, um, the value like this, the walk speed. But now that we have the tooltip, we don't need that. So we kind of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So I hope this video has been useful and you've learned something that you can take with you to your own projects. If you have, please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you have some of your own tips that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments below. And a big uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for helping this channel to continue to grow so I can continue making tu um, tutorials for you guys. All right, everyone. See you in the next video and good luck on your game dev adventures. Bye.